Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another episode of The Fat Show. So on this week's episode, I'm gonna be doing the brakes on our Porsche Cayenne uh, 958. Uh, I guess ours is a six-speed manual, it doesn't really matter, the brakes are the same. Uh, there was some model year where they changed uh, from 355 millimeter rotors to 360, so just pay attention uh, to that. Uh, but just doing everything with OE replacement stuff, I got some Zimmerman uh, brake rotors and some Techstar uh, brake pads, just OE replacements, nothing fancy. Also got all new hardware, all new wear sensors, um, and yeah, this is a, I've already done one side, uh, how I usually do it, I practice one, when something is done on both sides, I'll practice one side before I film it on the other, so I only look like half an idiot when I do it, but uh, it was super easy, um, pretty much zero snags, um, definitely something you can DIY with pretty minimal tools. The only thing that you might need to get if you don't have it is a 14 millimeter triple spline for the caliber bolts. Um, I mean, if you have any sort of European car, I would just break down and get a set of triple squares because they're used pretty extensively. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Everything else you can just do with normal, like basic hand tools. Uh, super easy job. Um, yeah, uh, obviously you gotta jack the car up take the cap off with the brake fluid reservoir so when you compress the calipers it has room to expand and you might need to take some out. So far I've done two and I haven't had to take any out yet. Um, make sure you have a lot of brake clean. My car is pretty dirty and then also the coating that comes on the, the Zimmerman rotors, it takes quite a lot to get that off of there and get it down to bare metal. But yeah, um, with that, let's get to it. Once the wheel is removed, the first step is going to be removing the brake pad wear sensor connector. Once the wear sensor is removed, you can go ahead and start to remove the caliper hold down bolt. Once the caliper is removed, you're going to have to secure it somehow not to damage the brake line. I just used a 5 gallon bucket for this. I used some wooden shims to expand the front brake pads in order to get the caliper off. Once the calipers off, the brake pads pop out pretty easily. As you can see, mine were definitely very worn. Before 
we're compressing the pistons back, make sure the brake reservoir is open and that there's room for expansion. I use some eye droppers to remove some brake fluid to make room for pressing the cylinders back in. When the caliper's off, it's a good chance to clean everything, paying particular attention to the brake pad slides. I cleaned them with a Brillo path. I also went ahead and replaced the anti-rattle clips on my brakes. <laughs> I went ahead and lubricated pretty much everything that was going to have metal on metal contact with anti squeal paste. sure it's necessary when the new brake rotors come with covered in zinc from the manufacturer but I put some never seize on the hub just in case. Use some brake clean to clean the coating off that comes from the factory on the new brake discs. discrepancy online as the specific torque value for the caliper hold down bolts I went ahead and torqued mine to 163 foot pounds The process for the rear is pretty much the same, just making sure that your parking brake is off before you get started, and there's actually a good spot to use a screwdriver to pry the brake pads out instead of using wooden shims. Other than that, everything is pretty much exactly the same. have an access port for the parking brake tensioner as well as the rotor hold down bolt. The tensioner access port is a 5mm triple square and the rotor hold down bolt is a T50. So much like every 
job I do on an old German car it was not without issue. Uh, even though the passenger side went completely smooth in the rear when I was removing the driver's side rear uh, rotor, even though I checked the hub, rotated so the parking gauge, parking brake was disengaged, the old parking brake assembly decided to come with the uh, rotor. When I took it off, I guess there's just some friction there still and it was old and rusty and it pulled out. And the whole parking brake assembly, I'll show you when I put it back together, is just held by these kind of like guide pins that go into the dust shield. The old dust shield was so rusty, it just pulled those out when I tried to hammer the rotor off. So I got a new dust shield. Um, I'm gonna clean everything up and uh, hopefully get this back together today. Uh, so the dust shield is continuous, so I guess the correct way to do this would be to take the entire hub off and press the hub assembly out, uh, but obviously I don't want to do that. So I'm going to cut mine with a hacksaw here, just so I can bend it around the um, around the hub. Um, I bought some metal plates so I can basically stitch this back together, but I'm not, I'll see how strong it is. I'm not sure if that's necessary. Um, I think the only thing that matters is that the strength is here, which is between two bolts, so I think that'll be good. All right, uh, let's get to it. Once again, I went ahead and put some anti-seas on the hub and uh, also the mating surface for the dust guard. All right, so the new dust shield is on here. I was gonna stitch this back together, but it is so friggin' strong that I'm not even gonna mess with it. Um, yeah, new dust shield's back on. I went ahead and painted the old brake shoes. So I'll go ahead and put the new, the new old parking brake assembly back together and then uh, finish the brake job. And here's the parking brake assembly put back together. So I reused the, sho the shoes, uh, cleaned them up the best I could and painted them. Uh, I got new, whatever, hold down bolts here and springs, new uh, tensioning springs here. I used the old time shirt, but I took it apart, cleaned all the threads, greased it, put that back together. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything's gonna work. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a terrible job, it was just a long time waiting on the dust shield to come in. And I'm really happy with the strength of the dust shield, even with the cut in it. I think it's gonna do its uh, purpose just fine. Um, I guess I took all the time to paint where I cut it and then I ended up kind of just scratching the hell of it trying to get it on. It's a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle, but if you uh, are patient, we'll get there eventually. On the rear rotors, make sure not to forget not only the rotor braking surface, but the parking brake braking surface as well. down bolts to 100 foot pounds. So since I mar messed with the parking brake, I uh, checked that the wheels spun freely with it off and then I turned it on and I can't spin it anymore both sides. 
So just to check that I make sure I put everything back together, didn't screw anything up there. If you didn't mess with it, it's probably not necessary. Also, I went ahead and rotated all the tires just to make sure nothing was grinding. Um, and then obviously, most important thing when doing a brake job is to before you have to drive the car, make sure you pump the brakes. I like to do it excessively, um, especially if you have anything valuable around that you cherish. It's probably a good idea because um, you won't, they obviously won't bite right away if you don't do that and you could crash into something. So that's a wrap. It uh, took a little bit longer than originally anticipated. The last few things I did off camera, uh, I pumped the brakes a bunch uh, before. Well, I think I actually showed it on video, but first, just to make sure the parking brake was working, I spun the rear wheels with it off and then I turned it on and then made sure they didn't move. Uh, I pumped the brakes a bunch before I left the garage. Then I left the garage and I just took it for a drive to bed in the brakes. So I did like three light stops from like 30 miles an hour, let them cool off. Then I did like three moderate stops from like 40 or 45 miles an hour. And then I did like three hard stops from like 50 or 60 miles an hour. And uh, that should be good. Um, so overall, this is definitely something that you could DIY in one afternoon or one day. At home, I guess there's just always those little things that you can't anticipate, which is kind of nice when <laughs> you have a backup car or whatever. Uh, I guess that's something that's almost necessary when you have a fleet of overaged uh, German cars. And I think the only issue with this one is just the fact that it was so rusty. I mean, I definitely checked that the hub or the parking brake wasn't engaged anymore before I hammered the um, rotor off. And then maybe I used too big of a hammer. Now, uh, German cars would say you can never have a hammer too big, I guess, but in this case, uh, perhaps the uh, three pound rubber mallet was not the uh, right tool for the job to get that rotor off, but had it not been rusty, then maybe it would have worked. I don't know. Anyways, live and learn. Uh, the car was down for a little bit longer than anticipated. It took like a week to get the new dust shield in, and I also got the parts so obviously to rebuild the parking brake assembly. Uh, so. Overall, a uh, pretty easy job and uh, feel for the brakes feel really good. Um, like I said, they were just OE replacements, so no real improvement as far as the braking, but just having new rotors. I don't know if the ones were warped in there before, but these new ones are super smooth, so uh, I don't drive the car enough to know. So Also, the new tires that we got, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but it got new wheels and tires, downsized to 18 inch, got a little bit more sidewall. It seems to ride really good. Uh, so I hope you guys liked this episode, and if you really liked it, then uh, go ahead and like and subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for next time. I think next time I'm going to be working on the uh, 30,000 mile service for my Alltrek, which is coming due. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Bye.